Good morning. Good morning. So the introduction of uh, you're gonna get stuck in traffic. It's a call. Something an accident, something happened. So we're gonna make do acapella style. Okay, until uh, your guests get so. Um, I think we can do it. I don't have a perfect pitch, but we'll, we'll get around the area of the nose, and that's that's what matters. Um, not too many announcements for uh, the service, uh, except one, um, just because I know we're going to do it. At the end of confession and absolution, after the, the absolution is spoken, the response is, Lord, you fill us with forgiveness. And I only point that out because I know we're going to want to say amen right afterwards. And we're going to have this combination of Lord and amen before we go, whoa, what, what's going on? So I'm going to say uh, after the absolution, Lord, you fill us with forgiveness in that. Amen. Today's gospel lesson is uh, the first of three sections of the uh, bread of life discourse from the gospel of John. I'll talk more about that in the sermon and what we're going to be doing with this message today and the next two Sundays. Uh, big announcement. Um, I know that it's been uh, a long time coming for this summer. But we have a theme now for VBS. Uh, this year, we decided once again to do an online VBS. And uh, we're going to be starting that in about two weeks, uh, August 16th through the 20th. Uh, Pastor Matthew Gonzalez and I have been hard at work um, getting everything ready. We're going to have, on our end, we're going to have videos uh, for each of the days. Um, short little videos that have a uh, craft or a game and all so a message and y'all's favorite, the dance. Of course we're going to dance. We're going to be singing and we're going to be dancing for, uh, for VBS. So um, if you know anyone that's interested, this can be you know, for a college. Maybe you want to go through it too because it's a lot of fun. Uh, head to our website, stjohns-wp.org. We have a VBS section on the website. And on that section, we also have a uh, supplies list. It's pretty minimal. Just some things, uh, a few things to get started for the for VBS. Uh, we also have uh, two other sheets that need to be downloaded. You'll see those on the website. Uh, but that'll get you started. And if there's any questions, of course, uh, please let me know. And please also spread the word. If you know any little ones that would love to participate in that, our videos will be online uh, on our website and also on our YouTube channel. Probably on Facebook as well. I'll see many on there. Uh, with that, um, I think that's it for the service. May God bless our time together. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us here into this place to feed us, give us your good gifts. We thank you especially for the gift of your Son, Jesus, who is everything. We ask that you would bless us, send your spirit to us, and guide us in all truth. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, please stand as we sing the first two verses of our opening hymn, Lord, open now my heart to hear. Uh, let's try this out, acapella. I'll start us off. Lord, open now my heart to hear. Jesus answered them, 
Truly, truly, I say to you, you are seeking me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Which the Son of Man will give to you. For on him, God the Father has set his seal. To God the Father. Because the Lord has heard you grumbling, that you grumble against him, what are we? 
Your grumbling is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, Come near before the Lord, for he has heard you grumbling. And as soon as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. And the Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the people of Israel. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord of God. In the evening, quail came up and covered the pan. And in the morning, the dew lay on the pan. And when the dew had gone up, there was on the face of the wilderness a fine, flake like thing, fine as frost on the ground. And when the people of Israel saw it, they said to one another, Now, what is it? But they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, it is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's song today, Psalm 145, verses 10 through 21. Let's recite this song together. All your works shall be a thanks to you, O Lord, and all your saints shall bless you. They shall see the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power. And make known to the children of Israel your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord is faithful in all his works, and kind in all his works. The Lord upholds all who are falling, and raises up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you. And you gave them their food in due season. You opened your hand. You satisfied the desire of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and kind in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desire of those who fear him. He also hears their cry and saves them. The Lord preserves all who love him. But all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord, and let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. The epistle is written in the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, beginning at verse 1. I, therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you were with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, even to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, it says, when he ascended on high, he led a host of captives and gave gifts to men. In saying he ascended, what does it mean that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who has descended is the one who also ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is ahead, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you. 
we stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. On the next day, the crowd that remained on the other side of the sea saw that there had been only one boat there. And that Jesus had not entered the boat with his disciples, with his disciples had gone away alone. Other boats from Tiberias came near the place where they had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. So when the crowd saw that Jesus was not there, nor his disciples, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum, seeking Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them. Truly, truly, I say to you, you are seeking me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not labor for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life. For the Son of Man will give to you, for on him God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to be doing the works of God? And Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. They said to him, Then what sign do you do that we may see and believe you? What work do you perform? Our fathers ate the man in the wilderness, and it is written, He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus then said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise you, Lord. Lord. You may be seated for our sermon hymn. I'll get us started again. Let's see. Uh,
dear friends in Christ. This morning our gospel text comes from the gospel of John, as you noticed. If you notice from our lectionary readings during the season, during this season after Pentecost, we've been exclusively in the gospel of Mark. But today, for the next two Sundays, our assigned readings are from the gospel of John. And John uniquely captures words that aren't found in the other gospel accounts. Jesus spoke those words the day following the miraculous feeding of the 5,000. That's been our, um, our story so far. Uh, so this happens right after the feeding of the 5,000 and that stormy night on the Sea of Galilee. The, next, the lectionary uh, splits this discourse, often called the Bread of Life Discourse, into three sections. Um, so consider this a three-part sermon series. And, uh, I'm once again indebted to my good friend, Dr. Peter Nasker, for this particular approach um, to the text. So for each of the three Sundays that we're going to be in John chapter 6, we will dwell on a particular promise. Each section has a particular promise that Jesus makes. And we'll take a look at those. Today we hear this promise from our Lord in John chapter 6, verse 35. It was the last verse of our text today. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger. And whoever believes in me shall not thirst. So therefore our theme and our title is the bread of life satisfies. Now again, to remind you of the context in which Jesus speaks this promise, the crowd that had been miraculously fed the night before with a feast of bread and fish were looking for Jesus the very next morning, and I'm sure you can probably guess why they woke up and thought last night was fantastic. And you know what I could go for? Some breakfast. Let's find that Jesus guy again and see what he can whip up for us this morning. Well, they eventually found him uh, in Capernaum with his disciples, again, not realizing what had happened the night before with the storm and him walking on water, all of that. Uh, but when they found him in Capernaum, Jesus already knew why they were looking for him. The very first thing he says to him is, Truly, truly, I say to you, you're seeking me, not because you saw signs, signs that point to him as the Messiah, but because you had your fill you're hungry again. But that's the thing about food, right? You always need more food. The crowds had their fill, but as we all experience, they were hungry again the next morning. Now, Jesus used that universal experience of hunger to teach them about himself and also to make them and us a promise. He said, do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. For on him, God the Father has set his seal. They're hungry, but Jesus says, I've got even better food. And even though Jesus said that he will give them this better food, the crowd's response is, what must we do? What must we do to be doing the works of God? How, how do we get this bread? How do we earn this bread? Because nothing is just for me. But Jesus responded, well, this is it. Believe in him whom he has sent. This better food that Jesus came to give isn't earned. It's given. And what is this food? I am the bread of life. It's Jesus himself. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. What a promise. What a good word for a group of hungry and thirsty people. I'm not talking about just the people in our texts. We need more and search for more than those things. I can't help but think of Jim Carrey's speech at the 2016 Golden Globe Awards. The announcer introduced him as two-time Golden Globe winner Jim Carrey. And when the applause died down, he said, Thank you, I am two-time Golden Globe winner Jim Carrey. You know, when I go to sleep at night, I'm not just a guy going to sleep. I'm two-time Golden Globe winner Jim Carrey. 
going to get some well-needed shut-eye. And when I dream, I don't just dream any old dream, no sir. I dream about being three-time Golden Globe winner, acting, winning an actor Jim Carrey, because then it would be enough. It would finally be true. And I could stop this terrible search for what I know ultimately won't fulfill me. But these are important, these awards. I don't want you to think that just because if you blew up our solar system alone, you wouldn't be able to find us or any of human history with the naked eye. But from our perspective, this is huge. The crowd nervously laughed as Jim Carrey revealed and shed light on what we all know. Those awards will never be enough. They won't satisfy. And I like the way that he phrased the problem, the terrible search. Like the crowds looking for breakfast, we're always searching for more, something that will satisfy. It might not be trying to win a Golden Globe Award, unless that's what you want to do, I don't know. But we are part of the terrible search. What is it for you? What do you want that you don't have right now? What do you want more of? Maybe it's just happiness. How often does a pursuit of happiness consume our choices? We buy things that make us happy, well, I guess at least for a little while, before there's the next thing and the next thing. It's like that scene from uh, the 1979 movie, The Jerk, with Stephen Martin. It's going back to before my time. But uh, Stephen Martin, Steve Martin, he's, he's in this uh, scene where he's got a bathroom, he's running out of the house and he's saying, I don't need anything. I don't need anything. I don't need you. I don't need anything. And he says, except this ashtray. And he grabs the ashtray. That's all I need. And he keeps walking. And this paddle game. This ashtray and this paddle game, that's all I need. And then this remote control. And that's all I need. The ashtray, the paddle game, and the, the remote control. That's all I need. He keeps walking. And these matches. And this lamp. And this. You, know, you get the point. Maybe for you, it's more money. More vacation time. Who doesn't want that? More free time. More rest. Maybe it's more recognition for all the things that you do. We're searching for more peace at home. The right show to watch on Netflix. We're searching for a sense of purpose. For meaning. For love, unconditional acceptance to, to matter to people. And how many of us are searching for the right medical treatments? The terrible search is never over. Because if it's not one thing, it's another. It's never over. Because no matter how satisfied or content we are today, tomorrow is another matter altogether. The Rolling Stones said it best. I can't get no satisfaction. Right? What Jesus promises us is the end of the terrible search. The promise that Jesus makes is more than food or drink. We have a very real spiritual hunger. And Jesus is the only food that can satisfy. So you, you can think of it like this. We were created to need. Uh, we don't just eat one meal and call it good for the rest of life, right? <laughs> we have to keep eating. There's more and more that's always needed. Uh, and we can't produce this food ourselves. Right? It has to come from outside of us. And we also need air to breathe. Right? Water to drink. These are things that we were created to need. And yet these things come outside of us. Food is obviously good. Medical treatments are obviously good. The food in this world, physical food, and, and even all the things that we search for, it all perishes. Again, now, it's not all bad. Don't hear that wrong. Again, these things that we search after, some of it is very, very good. But there's sin, too. 
And sin is deceitful, and it promises satisfaction, it promises happiness, but it lies to you, and it certainly hides the price tag. Whether it's good or bad, again, the point is that these things will never truly satisfy. We were created to need, but we were created to need something more. We need to be sustained, satisfied by better food. I am the bread of life, Jesus said. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. Jesus, the bread of life, is the food that does not perish. Why? Because he died and rose from the dead, and he's the only one who has been raised from the dead never to die again. He does not perish. And as Paul writes in Romans 6, 9, we know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. Therefore, he is the food that endures to eternal life. With Jesus as our food, the terrible search is over. He can and will satisfy. See, all of our needs, all the things that we were created to need, they all point to the fact that we need to be sustained by something, someone greater. We need the better food. We need our, our sins forgiven. Our relationship with God restored. We need eternal security, eternal life. We need purpose, hope, love. Our spiritual hunger is very real. And there's no food here that can satisfy. But Jesus is the bread of life. And he promises that whoever comes to him shall not hunger, and whoever believes in him shall never thirst. And good news, friends, there really are things that are free. You don't need to work for this bread. Jesus is not earned. Forgiveness and salvation are not earned. Eternal life is not earned. Grace cannot be earned, or otherwise it cease to be grace. He gives. We receive. You come to Jesus like that crowd, hungry and needy with all of your needs and your terrible searches, and Jesus gives you a better meal. He gives you himself. All who come to him in faith will be satisfied. Now, that doesn't mean that we will always be satisfied in this life. We will still need to eat. Okay, don't cancel your lunch plans. We'll still need medical treatments. We'll probably still keep our prime memberships. But what it does mean is that we can say alongside St. Paul in Philippians 4, I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I've learned the secret of, plate, of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through the bread of life, through him who strengthens me. I saw a glimpse of these words in action not too long ago. Every once in a while, you catch a glimpse of this reflected in, in uh, current events. Big current event right now, the Olympics. I don't know how many, how many of you are watching the Olympics or following it, but uh, in one specific event in the qualifiers for the Olympics, it's about a month or so ago now, um, this girl, uh, Sydney McLaughlin, she beat the world record for the 400 meter hurdles. It was crazy. And in a follow up post on Instagram, she wrote, I don't deserve anything. But by grace, through faith, Jesus has given me everything. Records come and go. The glory of God is eternal. And I saw that and I thought, I, I think this guy gets the fact that the medal doesn't matter, ultimately. That Jesus is what satisfies. Not another medal. And I realize you might be saying, okay, Fair, Pastor Jake, but she's an Olympic athlete. She's abounding. She's not brought low. That's easy to say when you're on the top. But there's a reason that Paul writes about contentment in both situations, right? When you're doing well, there's a the very real danger of being fooled that you can end your own terrible search. That sin is indeed deceitful. And, and in being 
brought low, there's the danger of being overcome by despair and discontent. And so no matter what situation we're in, we need Jesus' promise. I am your food. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger. Whoever believes in me shall never thirst. Standing firm on this, friends, you can go to Jesus in every situation, with everything, every need, confident that he is enough and his promises are enough. And you can rest in the hope that he has come to give you more than a fleeting moment, more than temporary happiness or short-term healing. He has come to sustain you to eternal life by giving you himself. Jesus, the bread of life, can and will satisfy. Thanks be to God. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Please stand. Let us confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son and Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, and died, and was buried. He descended into hell. And the third day he rose again from the dead. He descended into hell. And sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Ever-present Lord, in this world, a place of sin and wilderness, you give us what we need to sustain our bodies and lives. Greater than anything, you sent your Son from heaven to be the bread of life, that we never hunger for grace and forgiveness. We humbly ask you to be with us, sustain us, lead us, and guide us through this land all our days. Let your presence be known 
and heal according to your will. Point us to the greater healing of eternal life in the resurrection.
his true blood. Strengthen and preserve you steadfast in the true faith, now until life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this Sabbath year gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.